What's going on, everybody? And welcome to another edition of the Links and Locks Best Bets podcast presented by Bet365. I'm Jason Sobel from the Action Network. He is Ben Everell from Golf Bet. And we're here to play 18 holes, make 18 bets for this week's Farmers Insurance Open. Before we get to all those great picks we made from last week, because I, we've actually <laughs> nailed all the winners this year. It's been pretty easy nailing all these triple digit winners on the PGA Tour. Before we get there, though, uh, one reminder that we are indeed presented by Bet365. Bet365 does not do ordinary. That's why you get more boosts with them than with anybody else every day. They power up the odds on hundreds of bets to give you a chance to win more. Bet365 boosts specific markets, your winnings, and even parlays, and they don't stop there. Keep an eye out for their biggest and best odds with the incredible super boost. Check out the boosts and see why it's never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 21 or older. And present in Colorado, Iowa, Louisiana, New Jersey, Ohio, Virginia, or 18 and older in Kentucky. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or 1-800-BETS-OFF in Iowa. Terms, conditions, restrictions apply. Benny, as mentioned, Chris Kirk, Grayson Murray, Nick Dunlap. Huh, betting golf is easy. You guys know any hard games? What about Nick Dunlap? Honestly, well done to the kid. An amateur going out there first time since 91 to win. Honestly, if people had been asking me Saturday night whether or not he was going to get it done and to back him or not, I, I would have said no, even with that lead. And even with that talent, uh, I would have been like, nah, he, there's two big guns right there behind him. They're going to sneak up on him. The nerves are going to come. And not only did he handle that because he did make the mistake, he made the double bogey on the front nine, let Burns in front of him, but then was able to chase him down and make Burns make the mistake mm-hmm. on 17 and 18, getting up and down to win too. I know it looks pretty straightforward, Chip, people were saying, lots of green to work with. Uh, not easy at all when all that's on the line. So good on you, Nicky Dunlap. Bad luck to everyone else out there. Were it? There was apparently a few betters out there who did get on Nick Dunlap. Well done to his dad, no, most likely, or cousin or sister or whoever it was that is sneaking in a, a bet there at the 300 or 500 to 1 in some places. Uh, to have the big collects. Uh, I do know there were a couple of people that came in my DMs telling me that one of my long shots in Christian Bezudenhout, who I said, top 20, probably good, you know, good long shot. Uh, someone was riding a $25 bet on him at 125 to 1, was Ooh. death riding Nick Dunlap, but the kid got it done. Ooh. 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 <laughs> yeah, Benny, uh, it's it's been a wild season betting-wise. Um, I will say this much. There's... This is going to be wrong of me. I think that those of us in the industry, if you're not going to win, you should root on everybody else so that everyone else is making money. I can tell you right now, look, if I ain't winning, I hope all y'all are losing. Not not the <laughs> listeners. I'm saying like the other betting experts. It's like, hey, yeah. there's nothing worse than there's a fairly obvious play. Everybody's on that guy. You're not because you want to get a little contrarian. And the entire world wins on so-and-so. It's happened a bunch of times over the last few years. Well, no one's been on anybody so far for the most part. Well, we said this year. I think we mentioned at the start of the year, I said we did the math, didn't we? And it was like, if you bet the favorites every week last season, Mm -hmm. you came out well and truly on top. Well, you ain't anywhere near on top this week. This year, sorry, you're struggling big time on not just the favorites, but anyone that's not triple digits. So will that continue this week? That's the question, right, Sobes? Is exactly. that going to carry on? And so so I, I know you saw my tweet on Sunday evening. Um, I prefaced this tweet by saying, this is ridiculous. It didn't yeah. happen. It wouldn't happen. It probably couldn't happen based on the books not wanting to take on the liability. But if you had taken $1 and put it on Chris Kirk at 200 to 1, you'd be up $200. You take that 200 roll it over on Grayson Murray in the Sony. You'd now be up $80,000. Take that 80000 you throw it on Nick Dunlap at 350 to one and you'd have yourself a cool 28 million all in the span of two and a half weeks would have been a nice play. Oh, sorry. I, we <laughs> forgot to give the one, that one out on the pod. Um, I don't know. Maybe we should tell you if you have an extra 28 million sitting around, <laughs> roll it over to your favorite long shot this week and see what you can do with that. Uh, we will get to plenty of long shots. We'll even get to a couple of the favorites because I actually I kind of like one of the favorites. And I never like favorites, but As mentioned, playing 18 holes, making 18 bets as we do every single week. Benny Everell, you're on the tee at Torrey Pines. We're going to have a swing away. 
All right, mate. Well, I'm going to go to a guy that I was on last week who didn't quite get it done. I'm going to go back to the well. I'm going to give you a first outright pick. I'm going to get a bit of a Tory Pine specialist. And uh, just to tease it, I, I like a few Tory Pine specialists this week in certain spots. But Tony Finau, for me, um, I was hoping he'd be a little closer to the top last week, but I think he's done enough to sort of warm himself up, get ready to hit uh, the Tory Pines juggernaut. And look, I was speaking this to someone who I'll get to later in the pod earlier this morning, talking about how it's such a difference going from the shootout in the desert to now we're going to survival at Tory Pines. Uh, the north course, yeah, you can get some birdies there, but you've got to play at least three rounds. You've got obviously to win on the south course. It's absolutely teeming with rain down there today. Course is closed, flood warnings, etc. Long, luscious, rough, long golf course. You need to be able to survive. And I think that Tony Finau fits that mould. He's had quite a few good finishes. What is it? Eight of his nine inside the top 24 at Tory including a couple of uh, big weeks in contention. Uh, 15th strokes gain total last year, 23rd total driving, which means accuracy and length. Uh, those things are going to be important. I think Tony Finau is an option uh, there at about 28 to 1. You get him. Okay. So I love that play. I will skip over. I usually start with a long shot play for the second hole. I will go to my favorite top five play, Benny, for the last 10 years. I mean, literally 10 years now. I have bet Tony Finau. He's been my favorite outright play at Torrey Pines. <laughs> I've said every single year, he's going to win this thing. I play him in one and dones. I bet him. I put him in every DFS lineup. And for the most part, he's come really close. He's had yeah. a, a bunch of top five finishes already. Uh, a couple top fives, a bunch of top tens. Uh, and so, yeah, let's see. Uh, two top fives, five top tens, including three of the past four years. I probably should be on Tony Fina once again because I do it every year. I'm just playing him for a top five as far as this is concerned, our podcast. I will probably have a couple shares of him outright as well. And I'm telling the people now that if I'm getting off him outright, even just a little bit, you should probably hammer him. I do <laughs> like that market, but I'll be just a little bit conservative on Tony and take him for a top five at plus 550. Something you said in there rings very true. It's been raining. Both courses closed on Monday. We're taping this podcast on Monday afternoon. It, the weather's going to get better. The sun's going to come out. But this is going to be a long, uh, the south course. I'm playing three times. 77, 65. And that's when it's nice out. That's without a little bit of a slog and long, thick, rough. This is going to be an absolute beast. Give me a guy who's strong and long. Tony Finau fits the bill. Yeah, and, and also, we well, don't forget, I don't know if we mentioned at the top, we've got the anomaly. We're starting Wednesday this week, everyone. We're starting early. Get your bets in early. Yes, uh, It's Wednesday to Saturday this week, so that wet is going to be in play quicker than normal. Uh, and, yeah, look, it's a beast. Like I said, you've got to survive it. You've got to be able to handle it. You've got to be able to – so if you do get in that rough, you've got to be strong enough to hack it out. So uh, it's funny you're saying that about Tony, you're slipping down because you've been on him a lot and whatever else – i got a player like that as well. The people listening, I'll actually jump way ahead uh, now. I'm going to tell you who I would look at in the first round leader market at the South Course. This is where they're starting. And that is the outright favourite this week, Xander Shoffley, because he's basically almost dead to me after doing backdoor top 10 the first week when I picked him to win and backdoor top five last week when I picked him to win. He is a San Diego kid. The stats ring true for him there. I probably should stay with him and stick to him, but I'm almost trying to help the rest of you out and saying get a, get. – they're not up yet as far as I could tell, but get on him for a south course lead. You'll get a little bit juicier odds than the 9-1 to one around than what you're getting for him in the outright market. Uh, and if he starts hot, great, you're on him and you might have got that cash. If not, you can decide whether you're going to get, him on, get on him outright after that first round because generally the north is where the really hot starters are. Uh, you might find him a couple back, four back or something from the overall lead uh, and be able to get a little bit juicier than that nine to one. But uh, Xander, I looked down the barrel at you last week and said, step up. I know that says you were T3, but you know you weren't really in it. Get back in it. Help everyone else out. But I'll jump off so you can win. So I'm going to tell you about Xander Shoffley later in the 
podcast. Here. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, Maybe I'm helping you I, out then. And I've got reasons and I've got strategies and we'll get into all of that. So uh, let's get to hole number four. I will now get to my long shot and I've got a few more later in the pod. Stay tuned. Do not just hear my long shot go, oh, cool. I like long shots. They win every week and just blindly click this player and then turn off the podcast and not get back to it. With the 16th hole, <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I'm going to give you four other long shots in addition to this player that I like all of them. I, I mean, if you're just playing lottery tickets, I like all five, but uh, I like this one probably just a little bit more than the others. And this one, I'm going at 150 to one outright. Austin Eckroat, young kid, hits in a long way, leads the tour right now through three events in total driving, which is pretty interesting in that he didn't play at Kapalua where you're driving it long and straight for the most part on every single hole. And yet he's still leading total driving. I just want, like I said, uh, guys that, that can flush it, guys that can hit it a long way. Eckroat fits the bill and I will give you four more players for long shots. Let's see between 80 to one and 300 to one later in the podcast. So now you guys stick around everybody. I'll give him a I'll give him a three hundred to one long shot right now. How about that? Okay, I'm gonna go. I, I, look, the long shots are out there. I don't know if it's gonna be the triple digits um, as it has been the last three weeks, but obviously we didn't think it was gonna be like that either. First three weeks, because you can get guys like uh, what Nikolai Hoygaard for about fifty to one, who you're just going on reputation errors because he hasn't obviously been uh, at Tory before. And generally speaking, uh, you've needed a little bit of experience at Tory to win there uh, for the most part. Um, and then there's a guy who has won not that long ago there, Luke List at 75 to one or roundabout, but a 300 to one shot that I threw up statistically again, because he was 15th in driving distance last season, 27th in greens in Reagan, 23rd in bounce back birdies when he did make mistakes. Here's a name for you. Two top twenties in the past at Torrey Pines, Joseph Bramlett, 300 mm. to one. Yeah. Uh, again, Am I putting a house on a, on this dude? No. But if they're going to keep the trend going, he's a guy that sort of pops in a few stats at that 300 to 1 mark. Uh, and he starts on the north. So chance he can get off pot early, bring that 300 number way down. We'll see. If and when I'm playing Joseph Bramlett, it's going to be on the West Coast where uh, he's more accustomed to playing his better golf. Uh, the only thing with him, Benny, he was out for a while. I'm not sure exactly what the injury was, but... I believe he just came back. Yeah, he came back Sony a few weeks ago after missing. Yeah, he he was out since the Scottish Open in the middle of last summer. Mm -hmm. uh, just mm -hmm. came back at the Sony, fifty second there, missed cut last week. But again, weird stuff's happening atop the leaderboard every week. So yep. I'm not going to sit here and tell you not to take a 301 player. <laughs> Okay, then moving on to the sixth hole. Uh, I've got a guy who, uh, look, Benny, we like that intersection of recent form and course history. How's this for an intersection? Keegan Bradley, the last time he played, got into a playoff at the Sony, finished in the share of second place. Keegan Bradley, the last time he played at this venue, Torrey Pines, finished in second place to Max Homa. Uh, at some point, it's almost like a putt that you stand over and you read from the other side, it's a 10 footer and you're like, I don't know. I think it's dead straight. And sometimes a putt can be dead straight and you can just overread it for basically trying too hard. Sometimes in golf betting, we might try too hard. We go, well, I'm going to go with this guy. Cause I saw this stat and that gets me. I don't know. Keegan Bradley's playing well right now. We played well <laughs> here last year. He's played well here in the past. That's enough for me. I'm not going to overthink it too much. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure the uh, the PJ Tour guru numbers man, Rob Bolton, has got him second in his power ranking. So that'll tell you something. He's generally on the money with guys who are playing well and going to the right courses. He molds all of that in. So um, you're probably on the money there. I don't know why. Uh, Keegan Bradley is one of those guys that for a long time I haven't always thrown up in the betting options. And I, I, I think that's just because he hasn't resonated with me personally more, more so than other guys. I remember like I, I'm now on Tony Finau a lot when before I would just not even touch him because he couldn't win in the clutch. Now he's been able to do that. I'll jump on him more often. So um, you're right. Like Keegan was second, right? Last year, now that I remember, like absolutely yeah, had a crack at it. So fair enough. Uh, let's see. 
Chairman, I whoa, okay. I know I said that we need experience at this joint to do well, generally speaking. Uh, it was only a certain young European in the last however many, maybe eight winners that hadn't played at least six times at Tory before they won. Uh, and another young European I might throw out there who doesn't maybe not need that many times to win because of what he's got in his, in his kit bag is Ludwig Aubert. I think a top five at plus 450 is potentially an option. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if he came out. This was one of the weeks he gapped him because he just had his driver on a string and, and went from there. With it, with him being able to smash the ball, if he keeps it in play, uh, he is going to be at a significant advantage on this joint. Um, the Greens, yeah, like the last four years, I think strokes game putting has been important, but they're a little softer this this year. They're going to be a bit more susceptible to footprints and bumps and whatever else. I, I think that he could overpower the South course if if he's got his accuracy in check. So uh, top five is the play for me for the youngster. Benny, we talked about there being a lot of long iron shots into these greens. I went and yeah. found last year Ludwig Ober on shots from 200 yards or more out. He made birdie or better 45.93% of the time. That's a ridiculous number. Yep. Five percentage points better than Rory McIlroy, who was second on the list. Uh, look, this is a tailor-made golf course for Ludwig. And if anything, first of all, maybe those first couple of starts this year kind of threw people off the scent. And they're like, ah, this kid's really not that good. Secondly, I don't know if he's the type that's going to get motivated by everyone going nuts over Nick Dunlap and going, ooh, he's the next <laughs> big thing in golf. Nick yeah. Dunlap's coming. Watch out, everybody. Uh, look, nothing against Dunlap. And I'm certainly not going to bring him down 24 hours after the greatest moment of his life. But Ludwig Ober might be five times, mm -hmm. 10 times the player that Nick Dunlap is by the time things are said and done. Sorry. I just, and, and, nothing against Dunlap. Well, yeah. Ober is that good. Yeah. Ober is that good. And, and I'm neglected to mention third last season in bogey avoidance. Again, what do you got to do at Tory South? Not make many mistakes. Uh, yeah. This is a guy who's, adept at not making many mistakes. And if he can do that, it's going to, like the others are going to be trying to play catch up. And you can imagine too, if he's in form and you end up with him on Saturday and you're in that one of those last groups and he's got the tee and he's smashing it way out there and it's hitting the split in the middle, that pressure ratchets up for everyone else. Such a good golf course for him. Okay. When you said you were going to take a young European, uh, I should have thought Ober. I thought it might've been Nikolai Hoygaard. I thought it could have been Adrian Moronk. I've actually got another European here for a top 20. Guy that's been playing the PGA Tour now for a year or two. He's a floor guy for me. The ceiling isn't quite there. He's got nine top three finishes on the DP World Tour, one on the PGA Tour, but no wins on either of them. I still think Thomas Dietrich has a tremendous amount of talent. I think we might see the ceiling at some point. But for now, he's a floor play, so we're going to take him for a top 20. And I like him. I just don't know, like, does he have what it takes to go win? I think so. But I will play him for more conservative props right now, plus 330 for a top 20 play on Thomas Dietrich, another guy who should fit this golf course. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, I saw him win a World Cup in Australia with his mate for Belgium. Uh, who am I? What am I blanking on? Thomas the ex-Ryder Cupper? Uh, Thomas Peters or Nicholas? Thomas Peters. Peters. Thomas Peters. Uh, the two of them won the World Cup uh, in the Melbourne Sandbelt quite a few years back, but uh, he, he held his own. When Peters was supposedly the man in that team, it was actually Dietrich who helped carry that that yep. team to a very good victory. Um, all right, I'll give you a top 20 play. It's only plus 280, a little less, uh, but it's a guy I mentioned a minute, little while ago, former champion, Luke List. I think that's value at 280. He's had two top 20s in recent times, including that win. Uh, again, it's going to play long. He hits it long. <laughs> it's going to be uh, set up for him. He loves playing there. He clearly has good vibes, and uh, the board is sort of not really giving him that much love because of some of the other players in it. And I know, look, he might not necessarily um, be playing his best golf right at this minute, but last time he won, he was playing terrible golf when he won at Torrey Pines. And then afterwards he played terrible for ages and then should have won and then did win again in the fall uh, at, what was it, uh, Sanderson Farms or wasn't it coming off like no form. So he's the type of guy that can get hot one week out of, out of whatever. And I think that there's value there for a top 20 for a guy who yeah. plays well here often. Yeah, I like that. All right, nine holes down, nine holes left to go. Before we make the turn, a reminder, the Links and Locks podcast is proudly presented 
by Bet365. Bet365 doesn't do ordinary. That's why you get boosts, more boosts with them than with anyone else. Every day, they power up the odds on hundreds of bets to give you a chance to win more. Bet365 boosts specific markets, your winnings, and even parlays, and they don't stop there. Keep an eye out for their biggest and best odds with the incredible Super Boost. Check out the boost and see why it's never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 21 or older and present in Colorado, Iowa, Louisiana, New Jersey, Ohio, Virginia, or 18 and older in Kentucky. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or 1-800-BETS-OFF in Iowa. Terms, conditions, and restrictions apply. All right, we make the turn. We get to the 10th tee. I am up, and I'm going to go with my first-round leader play. and That's a guy that I traditionally like for four rounds, but I'll take him just for one this week. Sahith Thigala started out with a 66 on the north course last year. The, the scores were a little higher on the south course. Yes, the books will split them up between the two, so it's not like your south course guy has to beat my north course guy. They will split them up. But Thigala obviously took a liking to the north course as a west coast guy. I will take him for first round leader on the north course on Wednesday morning. On the 11th hole, I'll take Sahith Thigala for top 10 this <laughs> week at plus 320. Uh, I think, I don't know if it's going to be this year, uh, but he strikes me as a guy that will win here at some point. Like we talked about Finau, you said he should probably win here at some point. Thigala is another that I will be looking at every year until he until he has a couple of bad years in a row here. I think that, again, he smacks it. He likes it. He's a California kid. He knows the nuances of, of the short game and the, and the greens. Uh, I think that it's just purpose built for his game. Uh, and the fact that he's been 25th and fourth in his two starts back that up that he obviously enjoys coming to play there. I'm going to say a top 10 and a potential contender for the title. Uh, I think you get around 33, 35 to one. Don't be afraid yeah. to look at that. Yeah. Uh, I'll go conservative on the pod here. 320 for a top 10. All right. Uh, yeah, I like that. Look, I like Thigal every single week for the most part, especially when we're, out on the West Coast at the beginning of the year. So I think this makes a lot of sense as well. 12th hole. All right, look, this is easy. I'm not even going to talk about this one for very long. Sun J.M. finished fourth last year, sixth the year before. He's playing some good golf. In the player finishing position market, he's 27th or better, <laughs> minus 120. Benny, you're laughing. You might have the same play. Like I said, too easy? Yeah, that's it. I got that play. I thought I, thought I read 29th or better, but 27th is fine as well. Uh, like he's just, he's that good and he's that consistent. And I, I remember last week you had him and I'd forgotten about him after him being what was my original uh, pick and I jumped off him because he wasn't on the course rotation. By the way, Nick Dunlap, who are you? Ruining my course rotation scenario last week as well. Every other player in contention was on the rotation that I suggested they needed to be on. And there's, upstart kid comes from nowhere and ruins it. So next year, what am I going to do? I don't know. I have to come up with a whole nother, a whole nother thing to deal with at the American Express. But yeah, uh, Sungjae, um, I, 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 honestly, I'll be, st I'll be stunned if he doesn't win at some point this year. Mm. And I, yeah. it just feels like a, like he just doesn't finish worse than, does he ever finish worse than 30th? I don't know. <laughs> like no. I should check, but it's very rare. So yeah. yeah, look, we've wasted two holes there to have the same bet, but let's go on it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, 14th hole. There weren't a whole lot of matchups that I really liked at Bet365. I, I usually like taking something at around even money or even plus money. Couldn't find it there. So I'll just go with the favorite and Minwoo Lee at minus 125 over Eric Cole. Nothing against Cole. I love his game. Love love his work ethic. Love how much he uh, gets after it. But Minwoo is just in another class. And on this golf course, where, like I said, you got to flush it. You got to hit it. I think Min Woo Lee makes a whole lot of sense over Cole. Aussies love Tory Pines. Simple as that. Like, mm. obviously, Jason's won twice. Uh, Mark Leishman won recently. They always contend. They had, it's funny, like, they had had millions of millions, is obviously an exaggeration, but a bunch of top twos, threes, fours before Day eventually won in 15. It had been essentially the greatest course for Australians to place, but not win. And then he, he broke that mold and, and got the wins going. Um, so they just there's a lot of eucalyptus trees. I know that sounds dumb, but they all feel at home. Generally, at this time of year, they've come off playing in the Australian summer. Min Woo has been playing brilliantly around the world, winning in Asia, winning in Australia. Uh, I probably should have paid closer attention to his odds this week. He might be a sneaky chance to, to, 
to win as well. So good choice there. Uh, all right, I got a top. I looked for a top forty play with plus money. It's not the biggest here in the world, so I am a little, little worried. But he's had two top forties in the last three years. Uh, he was seventh last season on bogey avoidance. That's an important stat here. Uh, I've loved him ever since. He ate Vegemite and other things for me down there during Australia Day in the past. JJ Spawn. He, he, I remember him after he had his Vegemite. He said, "That's why they sent convicts there to eat this." Is that right? He was pretty funny. <laughs> But then he then he snuck and ate about 55 meat pies. He loved them. So I like him. And he's plus 105 for a top 40. I think he can do it. As I said, he's on a – it's like top 40, miscut, top 40, miscut, this, back to top 40 this year. He'll get it done for me, 105. Really good dude, by the way. I, he's one of my yeah. favorites. Of, of just guys I've gotten to know in the last year or two. Had him on the radio show a couple of times. And, like, don't really know him very well. Comes on the radio show. Ten minutes later, we're best buddies. I'm like, man, laughing, having – Having fun talking with him. So really good guy. Uh, 16th all I mentioned earlier. Hey, stick around because I've got a bunch of long shot outrights for you. And here they are. Uh, I'm going to start at 80 to 1 with Taylor Pendrith. Taylor Pendrith finished 10th oh, yeah. at the Sony a couple of weeks ago. This mm-hmm. golf course fits his game way better than Wileye does. So I think Absolutely. Taylor Pendrith. And again, DFS lineups, props, all those things. But he's a guy I've been waiting on for a few years to win something. He can certainly win. If Luke Liss can win this at this golf course, yeah. uh, Taylor Pendrith can. I will go to 110 to 1, and it feels like I'm chasing a little bit here, but I've been waiting for Kevin Yu to play his best golf. We talked yeah. about it last year. This is, guy is a statistical sensation. T to yep. green. You look at his numbers. You do like the blind taste test, and you just go, <laughs> oh, whose numbers are these? And you're like, I don't know. Is that Morikawa? Is that McElroy? Like JT? No, it's it's Kevin Yu. He's a fantastic ball striker. He's coming off a third place finish in the desert this past week. This is a golf course that should suit his game. If he is playing as well as it looked like he was this past week, he is worth a shot out, right? I'll go to 200 to one. Again, another one just I, I want a young kid, a flusher, got a good number. Sam Stevens makes some sense. Yeah. And then I'll go to my last one here. 300 to one. I'm telling you guys, this dude is cool. He's fun to watch. He's got a ton of experience. He's a rookie, but he's 33 years old. He's played 12 major championships already. Chan Kim is a stud. I'm telling you. I remember watching this guy six, seven years ago. Actually, it was seven years ago, the 2017 U.S. Open at Aaron Hills. He's on the range right next to Cameron Champ, and I'm watching the two of these guys. And yeah, we know what Champ has become and we know he's got all the firepower. But I was watching Chan Kim just as much and I'm like, that dude can go as well. So Chan Kim's a guy that I've been waiting to be able to bet on on the PGA Tour for a while. And now that he's here, I love the 300 to one number. Played well last week too, Benny. Yeah, mate, I could see, I was I was having a giggle watching the leaderboard on the weekend when Kevin Yu popped up. I said, all the data boys out there have got a half chub right now. They're chubbing up because <laughs> but he's, finally, he's finally actually on a leaderboard on a final day. Um, it was, it, it is, look, it was a little skewed last year because he missed a chunk of injury, but he still played enough to be obviously ranked. And he was, as you said, up there in everything just about, Um, and his results didn't necessarily bear what his game uh, was showing. And then, you know, in other words, it's going to eventually all come together because if he keeps hitting it that well, the the numbers eventually can't lie anymore. They're going to have him with some big finishes. So it's almost like if you can do the dollar units, you know, like it's each week just chuck your dollar on Kevin Ewan and see what happens because eventually he might just pop up and and do something big um, based on the stats alone. So I can see that. Um, in saying that though, mate, I'll go to my 17th hole. This will be a huge, huge shock to everyone out there that I'm going to go with my number one pick here. Huge oh, come shock. On. Come on. But it's going to be my Tory Pine specialist mate, what? Jason Day. Jason Day, there is no, there is, I, I argue there's not many better players at Tory Pines than Jason Day. It's just he's, he's been winning there since he was at the Junior Worlds way back when. Uh, he, it was the biggest tragedy that he was in a lull in his career when the U.S. Open went th- went back there and he he was not not necessarily playing at his best because of all the issues that were going on with his mother at the time, et cetera, um, because he would have been a massive contender that week too. But it's won twice, uh, multiple top tens. Let me see what it is. That, I mean, he's third, second, et cetera. Seven top tens and 14 starts. Yeah, like 
And and two of those starts were when he was very young in the very beginning that were like 35th and 40th. He, yeah. he just always... Seventh and third the last two years. Yeah, yeah seventh and third the last two years. There you go. He, he also is, let me see here, uh, this won't surprise you, but he was, let's see, last year, 15th on tour in total driving, 16th in bogey avoidance, 20th in scrambling, 10th in three-putt avoidance. I mean, I can just keep going on. This is his course. It's the place where he loves. I spoke to him this morning. I mentioned that I was speaking to someone. We had a good long chat as he was on his drive out to Palms, from, from Palm Springs to uh, Torrey Pines. He is ready to rumble. He said, Benny, you know me. It's the next two weeks for me. I'm, I'm head to the head in, ready to grind. Uh, he, he knows that he can effectively... He said, he said he knows that even if he starts slow on the south, he, he shot one over the two times on the south in the opening round and then went on to win. He said both of those times he could see other guys around him at the same score, even one or two shots better, moping and carrying on because the lead was eight under or whatever over on the north. And he knew that he had those guys beat. He knew he could he could grind it back. Uh, and he's ready to do that again. He's uh he's excited, just put it that way. He's trying to he's trying to throw me off the center a little bit. He's like, nah, stop backing me. Every time you do that, you put <laughs> the jinx on me. I said, mate, you, you you're the man. And uh I yeah, I'm, I can't help it. I have always gone with an Aussie pretty much at Tory Pines. And when Jason's in form, it's him for me. I would I'd love it. I would have loved if he was sneakily not playing as good like, and was still at the forty to one. I think he might have been two years ago or something, but 25 will have to do. Yeah. So this week and next week, Tori, and then Pebble, I'll never forget uh, years ago, I six, seven years ago, I was at Pebble and caught up with Jason day during, I think the pro-am or practice round. And I said, Hey, I said, Jay, why, why you, why'd you decide to play here this year? And he looked at me and said, well, I play every year. I said, Oh, Seems like a good decision then. Okay, cool. He's, he just laughed at me. He's like, you idiot. What are you doing? Like, ah, look, not all questions are going to like win me a Pulitzer. What do you want from me? Uh, he's, look, he, love, he, just he, loves, he loves Tory. He loves Tory, he loves Tory and he loves Pebble. Um, whereas it's funny because um, I was like, oh, and then we've got LA coming up, mate. You'll be back at Riv. <laughs> he loves Tiger Woods. He doesn't love Riv as much. It just doesn't suit his game as much. Yeah. He's like, hopefully I win the next two weeks and maybe I can decide to not turn up there. Riff. So that's, he, he's, he's, as I said, he's locked in for these two weeks. He knows this is his opportunity weeks and he's pumped for them. So I'll just say, I'll leave it at that. All right. 18th hole, I'll go back to a player you mentioned earlier, a player that you often mention here on the podcast. Xander Shoffley is the favorite in this week's field. I get it. After the last three weeks, if you're betting a favorite, you're probably an idiot. Well, call me an idiot. Nine to one, though, is a little too short for me. What I'm hoping is that Xander starts out. He will play the South course on Wednesday in the opening round. I'm looking for maybe a little 73. Like you just mentioned, Jason day started over par on the South course in each of his two wins at Torrey Pines love a little 73 out of Xander Shoffley on Wednesday. Maybe those odds go to 15 to one, 18 to one, depending on some of the other scores. And then I will certainly pick him up going into Thursday or Friday. If he's, within five, six, seven shots of the lead. Uh, this is a tournament where he really struggled earlier in his career. Missed the cut in four of his first five starts. This is his proverbial, quote-unquote, fifth major. He loves this event, grew up right around there. I think he was probably trying too hard. He's now moved away, lives in Las Vegas. That might help a little, kind of takes away some of the attention from the locals, but I think he's figured it out a little bit now. He's playing much better over the last couple of years. I don't like playing favorites, but I like Xander Shoffley here. I'm going to have some investment in him, even if I have to wait a day or two to get it in the outright marketplace. So those are the 18 holes. Those are the 18 bets, Benny. Yeah, I'm just going to throw in there, as I said, I, I do like Xander obviously this week, but I'm jumping off just for all of your benefit. Just trying to <laughs> give you guys a chance. I looked uh, him in the barrel. I, I really wish I was down there today or tomorrow so I could look him in the eye and straight up tell him, tell me why you shouldn't be dead to me in the betting scenario <laughs> right now. <laughs> You're killing me. But I, I like I think I, I think me jumping off is probably the green light for everyone else to jump on. He's perfect. He's clearly that good. He's got to win soon. And uh, we'll see. But hopefully Jason takes him down. Well, I'm, I'm just hoping that Xander doesn't go shoot 65 in the first round of the South course. Yeah. Go from nine to one to three to one, and then we can never jump on him. I want that opportunity to pick him up later. So uh, this has been the Links and Locks Best Bets 
podcast presented by Bet365. Remember, you can find us every week during the PGA Tour season. Download, subscribe, rate, and listen. For Ben Everell, I'm Jason Sobel. Good luck with all your selections, all your bets for this week's Farmers Insurance Open. Here's hoping you hit the green. 